my dudes. We're gonna do a little Q and A here today. <laughs> All right, move, move, move. I gotta get back here. There's not a lot of space. Just kidding. We were gonna record there, and I did record there, and all of the footage I hated because my face was backlit. So we're gonna go somewhere where I can get some little bit of sunshine. This is the first day that the sun has come out in like six days and I was like, I am filming today. So that's what we doing. So I am parked at a school which I would normally not park at, but it's a holiday and nobody's here. Happy New Year's to everybody. I hope you've had a good holiday season. With that being said, we're gonna get into some questions. And if you're new here, hello, I'm Emma. I am 23 years old and I live in my 2015 Kia Sedona and I have since this past April. Last week I asked you to ask me questions and today we're going to be answering some of those questions. I'm taking these questions from my YouTube community post and from my Instagram. So thank you to all of you again who ask me questions about stuff the most popular question is across like my whole youtube channel girl why are you bald <laughs> why are you bald and the answer is i can't handle it i can't handle it i can't handle having hair i'm too i'm too damn lazy i am too damn lazy when i was 12 i originally cut my hair into like a pixie cut because i wanted to look like prince zuko from avatar the last airbender because i thought he was hot and then i realized that the shorter you go with your hair, pretty much the less you have to deal with it. And I wanted that entire part of my life gone. Because I was never very good at doing my hair. I was never very good at styling my hair. And once I realized that I could just not do anything with it and still have it be okay, that was the end for me. I did go back and forth between like a pixie cut and a short bob. Because, I mean, the short bob was when I was in college and I was like, oh yeah... I should grow it out now. I think that it would look so cute because I wanted double dutch braids. I wanted boxers braids so bad. I think they're so cute and attractive and endearing. I wanted boxers braids so I grew out my hair into a short bob when I was in college. And girl, I'm not even going to say nothing. I'm just going <laughs> to... Like, I don't know how to do it. I can't do it. So I just cut it all off. Anyway, that was a really convoluted answer to this question. Um, what made me buzz it all off? I buzzed it all off in 2020. Thank you, Miss Rona, for that one. Miss Rona was the final push. And I I don't know if I'm going to go back. So I don't, I don't know. That's why I'm bald. And I'm bald because I can't handle it. It's like, it's like not knowing how to style your clothes so you just go out naked all the time that's how it feels and it's so easy to clean so easy to clean jean asks if i put any products on my hair and my scalp the answer is not with intention but if a lotion smells good you bet your butt i'm just gonna moisturize my scalp a little bit <laughs> also when i wash my face in the morning i get to like wash my whole head so instead of having a fresh face just a fresh face i get a whole fresh globe fresh globe in the morning it's lovely anyway if you want to cut your hair then this is your sign to do it <laughs> and the people always say oh i'm worried that my skull isn't going to be the right shape or my head's going to look weird girl you don't know you don't know until you cut it off you don't know i've got bumps all over that nobody talks about i've got bumps i've got one here i've got one here I've got a bunch on the sides and nobody ever seems to notice them. So it's just, you know, anyway, it was a very enthusiastic answer to the buzz cut question. I am a very avid proponent of buzz cuts. And no, to those of you who keep asking if I'm military, no, I'm not. Do I look military to you? Do, Do I, I look? look? <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Next more popular question. Oh, hold on. I had it somewhere. I did not organize this properly. Okay. Steph and Robert would like to know about my music journey. Robert asks if I perform on, if I perform on planning, if I plan on performing or pursuing music at all anymore. We're just going to put the computer off to the side for this one. Okay. This is a story. Okay. I grew up very, very musical child, exceptionally musical child. child. I... Ever since I had the dexterity to, I would play anything I could get my hands on. And that started with the piano in my parents' house. It was one of those pianos that kind of looks like a suitcase. 
and it was a hand-me-down it had been in the family for a couple generations and I started playing that my mom convinced the local small town piano teacher to give me lessons and I did that for like 10 years I took piano lessons and in fifth sixth grade is when my very small school started offering like music classes so I signed up to play percussion and band and I signed up for chorus and I did everything that I possibly could I auditioned for everything I competed in any competitions I could and I did really well I love music and I always have and when I was a very young child I did want to perform when I was like 11 I was like I'm gonna go to Juilliard but by the time I turned 12 I was like oh wait money exists I'm never gonna be able to support myself <laughs> if I pursue this so at the age of 18 I just kind of stopped and I also had some like traumatic memories associated with people that I performed with oh my god who doesn't and I stopped playing and I made up all these additional excuses um to support me not playing anymore and I let that go and that was about six years ago now I'm like 23 now also five years ago whatever and I went to college and I got my job and now I am just starting to get back into the idea of making music again. Thank you to YouTube for that, and thank you to you guys for that, because if I didn't have you guys watching my videos, then I would post whatever I want, and if I posted whatever I want, I would get copywritten for, like, using a bunch of music that isn't mine. So, thanks to you, I now have incentive to make my own music for YouTube videos, which is what I did in my last video. All the music in that video is mine and it's the first time that i had ever posted my music anywhere so thank you so much for kind of pushing me to get back into that again because that's a huge part of myself that i just let go for a long time but i don't plan on to, to actually answer the question geez, i don't plan on making a career out of music and if I ever had the opportunity to perform seriously, I mean, like, yeah, I'd take it in a heartbeat. I would be nervous as hell, but yeah, I would do it. Um, but yeah, I hope that answers the question. Thank you so much for asking that. That means a lot to me. So thank you a lot for answering, uh, for asking that question. Thank you. Another common question that I get pretty frequently on my YouTube channel is, do you ever plan on bringing your dog on road trips? I get this question a lot in my comments. And this question in particular, I think feel like people really don't like that I don't have my dog with me. Nobody's ever like outright said anything nasty like, "Ooh, you're a shitty dog mom or whatever. Nobody's actually said anything that, you know, direct, but I do get the vibe that people do not like that my dog is home. So in order to give you context about this, I need to give you the context of the living situation that I was in before I left to go live in my car. Before I left to go live in my car, my family, my family's made up of four people and we lived side by side in adjacent apartments and we had a dog and we all shared the dog. This It was a family dog. So even though we were living separately, we had this dog and the dog was very much back and forth. The dog is very accustomed to my entire family and he loves the rest of my family. And also he hates cars. He doesn't like being in cars. So for me to take him away from the rest of his family and then put him into an environment that he actively dislikes so that I can have some companionship and protection or whatnot on the road is very selfish of me. For any of you who own dogs, you know that taking them away from a situation where they are extremely comfortable in is very traumatic for them and it can even result in a lot of bad like health outcomes and issues with that so for his comfort i don't want to bring him out with me i hope that that makes sense let me know and not all dogs are built to do this kind of thing he absolutely is not one of those dogs i do not have a golden retriever i do not have a husky i do not have one of those like classic dogs that you can bring and do adventures with <laughs> for a lot of people it's like oh that's no excuse mateo has his cat out but I, it just it's not something that i was able to do given my dog and his particular situation and given that he has so many people to take care of him at home and who love him and who he loves it wasn't practical and it didn't quite work out in the way that you see a lot on youtube so 
let me know what you think about that i don't want anybody to think that i'm a nasty dog mom i i promise i'm not <laughs> so yeah that's that's why william is not out with me he's he ain't built for it trust me trust me so those were all the more popular questions now we're gonna get into the nitty gritty uh tofu ryan asks if i ever feel lonely out on the road and the answer is yes and i've had okay i've had to ask this question to the camera right now i've had to do this interaction several times for several takes i can't tell you how many takes i've just like sat at the camera and been like i every time i try to answer this question i go on a weird rant about something that doesn't make sense so i'm gonna cut it off here actually no i'm not i do want to say that loneliness is a means to an end I realized when I first went out that I am, in fact, very uncomfortable with myself and my own feelings. So I actively tried to avoid myself by spending so much time on my phone. It's not even funny. Denying myself actual interaction with myself by using distraction as a method of coping with the loneliness was robbing me of the time that I could be spending with myself. So yes, I did get lonely and it's something that I want to fix going forward. I want to have a different relationship with loneliness and i want to use it to cultivate a relationship with myself and in just instead of trying to avoid it like by avoiding it and by being scared of it it's so much bigger of a deal so anyway to answer that question yes um and again i yeah, I'm just going to stop talking. I'm going to stop talking there and go on to a different question. So <laughs> I hope that that made any sense. I don't know. Samantha the Trippy Traveler. Oh, yo, Samantha the Trippy Traveler. She has a YouTube channel and she's in an Astrovan. Astrovan is sick. I love your Astrovan. Um, Samantha the Trippy Traveler. The, I can't say it. The Trippy Traveler asks, have I been to Sedona, Arizona? I have not been to Sedona, Arizona, and I need to go to Sedona, Arizona because my car is a Kia Sedona and the Sedona needs to see the Sedona in Arizona. So we're going to go to Sedona, Arizona. I have heard many cool things. I have heard many not so cool things, but I need to go see it. Bus Bus needs to go see it because Bus Bus is a Kia Sedona and yeah, it's on the bucket list. No, I haven't seen it, but it's on the bucket list. Bayou Backpacker. Hey man, Bayou Backpacker. Uh, wish my setup had room like that. Looks good though. Oh, that's just a straight up compliment. Thank you. Um, yeah, it is quite roomy in here. I This is a minivan. So I feel weird about this because most van life people have, you know, they have a van and then car life people are, I feel like car life people are sequestered to sedans and SUVs and like Honda Elements and stuff like that. So I feel like I'm in the middle and I can't call myself either one because if I call myself a car life person, then all the people that are living in Sedona's or sorry, all the people that are living in sedans are just going to be like, and I feel like if I call myself van life, then all the van lifers are going to look at me like, girl, that ain't no van. Anyway. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm really happy with the space. It is everything that I could want it to be. And I would not upsize or downsize for the world. Um, I mean, for to save money, I would downsize if I had to. Um, I would absolutely live out of a sedan if I could. But yeah, I'm happy with the Sedona. All right, so Robert actually came through for a real one and asked me a bunch of questions, which is really nice. He asks me... What is your favorite book? Discworld series by Terry Pratchett. Anything by Terry Pratchett. I think that my favorite Discworld book is Mort. Um, and he also asks what my favorite movie is. And honestly, the first thing that comes to mind, I really want to watch How to Train Your Dragon right now. I really want to watch that movie right now. Um, also, I really like those weird 80s Bakshi animations like the like the original animated series of lord of the rings and just that weird genre of 80s fantasy movies the dark crystal uh the never ending story stuff like that i love those kinds of movies that's crazy they're just they're so weird robert also asks are you open to long distance relationships oh Oh, this is a very good question. Yes, it's yes. Let's get on to some other... Let's do some easier questions. These are hard questions. Would you cut off your finger for a million dollars? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm right-handed, so it would have to be my left hand. I'm trying to think of which finger. It would be my middle finger on my left hand because I need the other, I need these to balance each other out if I have equal number of fingers on each side. Did you know that there are no muscles in your fingers? No muscles in your fingers. No muscles. So all of the movement of your fingers comes from the muscles in your forearm contracting and bringing tendons. Tendons connect muscle to bone. So here's your muscle, tendon, bone. Muscle contracts, tendon pulls, and then your whole fingerology moves with it so your fingers only move because of the muscle in your forearm there is some muscle here there's some give here in your thumb but that's why thumbs are so cool but anyway yeah i like bones and i would absolutely cut some of them off for a million bucks uh-huh cut off some phalanges where's my check babe i'm ready if you could have one superpower what would it be oh i i would want to be able to fix anything um just by like looking at it so that my car would run forever and I would never have to worry about like holes in my tires or anything or running over a nail or doing anything silly or my transmission copping out or putting the wrong fluid in somewhere or anything I wouldn't have to worry about anything I could just fix it if we're talking about non-practical superpowers though I would want to be able to control sound that'd be cool if I could just turn down the volume on anything Heck yeah, dude. Heck yeah, babe. Also, if I wanted to, like, amplify something that I was hearing from a long ways away that I was interested in. Oh, I could eavesdrop on so many conversations. <gasps> yes. Okay, yeah. So, I would have two superpowers. One would be to do whatever I want with sound, and two would be to fix anything that I would want. It's just, just <laughs> I would just want to be an artificer. Here's another question. Pineapple on pizza? Ooh, I have not had it, but I am very open-minded. Ram Shackle Day Parade asks, what's the best comfort food on the planet? Italian food. Italian food. Hands down. Give me some eggplant parm, some shrimp scampi. Oh my god. Some lasagna. We got the baked ziti up in here. We got the calamari. Oh, we got the cappuccino after the dinner. Oh my god. Yes! I love Italian food. I also love Polish food. I love pierogies and guampki and oh my god my mom makes a gorgeous beef stew i just started listing foods i didn't even answer the question i just started listing foods i think out of all that i would say eggplant parm and my mom's beef stew yeah that's really good this the six wrists what's up buddy asks can i do a flip no <laughs> i cannot do a flip um and he also asks, is 2 plus 2, 5? Nobody. No, he's not. The Six Wrist asks also what my favorite music genre is as of right now. And to that, I have no idea. I have no idea. I want to get back into listening to music really methodically. I want to get back into listening to music like by going into an artist and going into their albums and digesting them and listening to the whole discography and i know that i'm gonna get a lot of hate when i say this but normally i just shuffle my liked songs and i add a bunch of songs to my liked songs all the time but i just hit play on it and shuffle because i'm gross i listen to so much music house house i'm most likely to just vibe with house regardless i also love r and B. I don't know i just watched the elvis movie yesterday so now i'm like oh did i hear it not? yeah so we're gonna we're gonna go back to the classics in a little bit but i love house music frederick julian 8738 what is up my guy he asks in your last video you showed yourself doing some pretty skillful figure skating i was quite impressed thank you babe oh my god he says, it looks like you may have had some previous experience on ice. Did you have some special training in the past? No. I taught myself how to rollerblade during COVID, and ice skating is easier than rollerblading. Fight me, I dare you. Fight me, I dare you. Ice skating is way easier than rollerblading. Another question uh, by I Love Lush and Jared Ford is, do you have any international travel goals? What are your dream destinations? Oh, um, I don't have any international travel goals 
as of right now because that's expensive <laughs> but i love the idea of seeing the alps i would love to go to switzerland i think that that would be so gorgeous oh my gosh oh, that was a good question we've got two more questions and oh they directly contradict each other the first one is why are you so hot that's sus sus the second question is, why are you the coolest? That's, that's so sweet. Thank you. Kate asked that question. And it's ironic that she asks that because Kate just, she does a lot of painting and she's really good. And you should check out her Patreon and her Instagram because she does. she's been doing so many cool abstract color theory sand under a microscope type paintings lately and you should go check her out so thank you for the compliment kate also please go check out her patreon so those are all the questions that you guys asked me thank you so much for asking me questions and thank you so much for watching i hope that you have had a lovely holiday season and that you continue to have a good start of 2024 put down put down the new year's resolutions in the comment section i want to see them I want to see them and also recommend me music send me music i love listening i have a whole playlist of subscriber recommendations and i think i i want to put that in a video at some point even though i'm probably going to get copyrighted copywritten copyrighted so i don't know i just thank you for sharing yourselves with me and thank you for allowing me to share myself with you because i'm having a good time doing it and Thank you. I appreciate you. Please take care. Stay safe. And I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye. All right, all right. Oh, my favorite song as of late. I remember it's Return of the Mac. Return of the Mac. Return of the Mac. I don't know any of the other words. I don't know any of the other.